Sloth and Scruff are two European brown bears. They may look happy and healthy now, but the start to their lives was very different. Five years ago, they were the last two remaining bears kept in the notorious former bear breeding centre, Kormasosh. Um, so basically they lived in a, in a huge concrete box or pit. Um, there was no grass, there was no sort of shelters outside. It kind of just looked like a, a prison for bears really. There was no, yeah, nothing enriching, nothing happy or anything. It was just very grey, very concrete and very barren. In Bulgaria, European brown bears had been bred to be shot by trophy hunters for sport and kept in a row of concrete pits. At one point, over 75 bears were kept in each breeding centre, solely for hunting purposes. As a result, they expressed signs of trauma. Yeah, so when the bears came in, um, they didn't behave like how um, healthy or mentally healthy bears would, would behave. There was a lot of signs of trauma, so they'd be pacing a lot. Um, they had repetitive behaviour, um, not necessarily good behaviour, so a lot of pacing, a lot of head twisting. Um, and they uh, used to sc scrape along the floor, um, which da damaged the underside of their paws. This is all stress related and trauma related. The law changed in 1993, banning captive bears from being hunted. However, the bears kept at these centres were simply left there as the staff were dismissed and stopped coming in to look after them. It was up to outsiders to save these bears. Locals would come and feed them twice a day, which is what kept them alive. They were uh, emaciated, I'd say. Um, if you're looking at weights, you're probably looking at 185 kilogram. When now you're looking at his top weight would be around 285 kilogram. They had no skills um, in their in their upbringing to one of the teaches them all the skills they acquire. So if they're not taught, they would just not find anything to eat until they used their nose and got in themselves into trouble. So they had to be taught to learn how to forage for themselves. Alertis, a bear rescue organisation, contacted the Wildwood Trust and asked if we could give these last two bears a home. We raised the money through fundraisers and after a 1500 mile journey through nine countries, the bears arrived in their new one and a half acre woodland paradise in Kent. complete with a plunge pool, waterfall, dens, and up to 50 species of native trees. This couldn't be further from the concrete pits of Kormasosh. There's a lot of grass areas, which they use when they first come out of hibernation. They'll be eating grass mostly, so we've sown that with, a wood, with woodland species of grass that do well in the shaded areas. There's uh, small shelters out there and large mounds. Uh, and the large mounds have been used for making dens in. Uh, the scruff particularly likes to dig uh, these huge, vast dens. Headkeeper Paul looks after Fluff and Scruff and monitors their daily activities. In Bulgaria, the bears were fed maize meal porridge, so their digestive systems were not used to processing regular food. Every fruit, every vegetable they eat is recorded as keepers complete the long process of rehabilitating their diet. Now, the bears are fed on a nutritious omnivorous diet, which is expertly balanced to the bears and the seasons. A variety of enrichment is scattered around their enclosure every morning, so they have to do the work to find it, just like wild bears would. Following their rehabilitation and therapy, the bears are now unrecognisable to the frail malnourished bears they were before. So we rescued Fluff and Scruff, five years ago now, and a huge amount of the work that the Amazing Keeper team have been doing is to get them back into exhibiting normal bear behaviour, behaving like bears should do in the wild. And getting these poor, abused and neglected bears back to this level of health and vitality and natural behaviour has been a huge achievement, it's something I'm really proud of. Thanks for that undergone torpor now, they're foraging, just doing bear stuff. They spend the whole day just being bears rather than being in this concrete pit, essentially. So when the bears first arrived, they were really underweight. They were completely out of all the natural rhythms of being a bear. And so we've got them back into those natural seasonal cycles and getting them to exhibit again as much of that natural bear behaviour as we possibly can. Yeah, it's really rewarding just to see them sort of bounce back, like completely forgotten about their past life. You know, the work we've done has been really nationally and internationally recognised now. We've won the Biaza Award for the Rehabilitation of the Bears. 
And we also had our keepers presenting at an international bear symposium on bear husbandry, you know, really setting the standards for the best ways of looking after bears in captivity. It's why, it's why you do the job, part of the reason why you do the job. It's, uh, it's immensely satisfactory uh, just to see them doing their stuff. I suppose ideally you would have them released, but that's not possible. <laughs>